Welcome to the introductory series of training videos for SolidCam. This video's topic is iMachining Setup. So in this video, we'll be talking about how to set up your iMachining settings for use with the 2D and 3D iMachining toolpaths. So we'll start by going to Tools, SolidCam, and iMachining Database. So by setting the settings in here, you're actually setting them for the global settings. Now that being said, you could do the same thing in the CAM part file with the definitions. Any definition you add to iMachine, it gets added to this global library and it's used throughout the software. So generally there really is no difference between doing it here and the 2D iMachine or the 3D iMachine. All go back to the same iMachine database found here. So I'll just click on that. And what you get is the iMachine database window here. Now, the information that's required for the iMachining tool, tool path is the machine information and the material information. And you can see here we have the categories of machines and materials. Uh, basically, for the machines, we need to tell it what the cap capability of the machine is, the maximum capability, only because the iMachining tool paths are optimization tool paths. They will try and use this machine as hard and fast as possible. So we need to know the maximum limits of the machine. Now, um, what you could do is you can either give it specific information. So you can see here I have a list of different machines. And in this case with the Haas SS, it has this information here. If I were to right click and say new machine, the red highlights are the only information I need to provide, or in this case, the minimum information I need to provide for this machine definition. And that is the max spindle speed, the maximum feed rate, and the max spindle horsepower. Um, now, in this case, if you define your machine this way, specifically that machine, this is the information you need to provide. That being said, there is another option up here called defined by VMID. And essentially, if you look at my definition here where I've labeled it as per VMID, it doesn't have the same information there. It has the same categories, but it doesn't have the red highlights. Even if I were to click on new machine here, it's not actually asking for any information. It's just going to take that information right from the VMID. And the VMID is actually one of the two files you get from our post-processor team. SolidCam post-processors come with two files, the GPP file and the VMID file. The GPP file is the actual post-processor. That's what turns all the toolpaths inside your CAM part into G-code. The VMID is actually the information about the machine. So the maximum travel, maximum spindle speed, maximum horsepower, a lot of the information that you're looking for here. So that's why when you define your uh, iMachining definition for machines based off the VMID, you actually see this percentage of what's listed in the VMID. So my suggestion is usually to create one that's called per VMID, and then that way, whenever you add a iMachining toolpath, whether it be 2D or 3D, all you gotta do is just click on per VMID as your machine definition, and it'll grab that information from the post processor that you currently select for your CAM part. So you have the two options. You can either do specific definitions here, or you can just do per VMID and rely on the information from the VMID file. When it comes to the material, it's a little easier. Um, with the default install of SolidCAM, you get a lot of information here about uh, different materials, but generally these are placeholders. These are more for training and trial purposes. Your actual information you want to provide, you can do it again by right-clicking, and this time you can say new material. And again, the red highlight is what you need to provide at minimum. In this case, it's the ultimate tensile strength. The ultimate tensile strength of the material allows the iMachining toolpath to utilize the, the maximum ability of that material. Uh, it goes down to the, the actual physics of how we cut the material with our, our, our tools. Uh, so the ultimate tensile strength will allow us to figure out uh, how hard we can push this material before, um, before it reaches its limit, basically. Now, the ultimate tensile strength is something you can get from uh, the web if you don't have a material data sheet, uh, very similar to what you would do with the machine. With the machine, you probably would go to your operations manual or contact your machine supplier. With the material, you could do the same thing. You can either look at a, uh, a material data sheet that would have come from your material supplier, or you can go on the web and, and look at uh, whatever website you uh, you go to for uh, material information. Uh, one that I usually recommend is matweb.com. At matweb.com, basically, if we just go to matweb.com, uh, you can see that it is essentially just a material library. Uh, you can type in whatever material you're looking for. In this case, let's do a quick search for 6061. And then from the results, find one that matches your results. Let's go to the T6. And if I scroll down through the mechanical properties, tensile strength, ultimate, 
for standard temperature and pressure conditions, looks like it's 45,000 PSI would be the value that I would plug into my I machine. So essentially, all you'd have to do is just go to where you plug in that information. In this case, I've given it a name. There's my 45,000 PSI. And again, this is a global uh, data entry. So this will be used throughout the software, anywhere where you use your 2D or your 3D iMachining toolpath. So in this video, uh, I was just covering the basics of the iMachining definitions, the material and the machine. In the next videos, we will see how to use the 2D iMachining and then the 3D iMachining toolpath. Thanks for watching.